Okay, let's go. Uh, once again, welcome everyone. My name is Jakub Nowicki. I'm a senior software engineer in Epsilon, a company uh, focused on providing uh, solutions for uh, various other companies based on uh, mostly on Shiny, but also we, did, we do some other uh, software engineering related to R, but our main topic is Shiny. And uh, today I want to share with you a glimpse of uh, a tool that we developed uh, during the years. Uh, maybe not during the years, but the, the idea of having such a tool uh, started a few years ago. And uh, the, the right, no, the, the thing that I will show you in, in a minute is the outcome of those years. So. Uh, Basically, what is Rhino? Rhino is a framework uh, for Shiny applications that keeps in mind that Shiny is, uh, and R in general, it's just a programming language. So if it's a programming language, then uh, let's keep all those best practices developed through the years of software engineering and put it here, let's use it to, to produce uh, something that is reliable, that is maintainable, and uh, let's treat Shiny and R uh, as it should be treated, as a regular uh, tool that can be used in enterprise. Uh, so I bet all of you already heard about it. So, uh, because we, we, we released it a few years ago, and uh, the general idea I want to, to, to share with you is the Rhino is a framework that is kind of a toolbox. It uh, is based on various different tools that are known. Uh, and uh, it combines them and uh, shows how, to, how you can use them uh, to, to test things, to write things in a better way. Uh, to keep your code the best as it can be. Of course, th those are just our ideas how it, it can be done. There are other uh, tools that uh, do similar thing, uh, but this is the way that we, we, we came in Absolutely. And this is uh, something we want now uh, to, to share with you. A uh, few uh, things about the, this workshop. Uh, we have only one half hour, so uh, this will be a pretty fast one. And uh, to be honest, I will be, uh, I have uh, a lot of things already prepared. So uh, probably you will not be able to, to keep along with, with, with what I'm uh, showing on the screen. Uh, don't be afraid. Uh, here is a link to the repository. Now it's empty. Uh, but I will uh, post everything there. A uh, few things about the requirements. Uh, I assume that all of you have uh, already installed Rhino. Uh, I also ask for Node.js and Yarn. Those two are optional, although without it, you will not be able to, to follow everything. Most of Rhino will still work, but uh, without uh, without uh, some cool features that I will show you. Uh, for now, we are all uh, muted. If you have any questions, please ask them uh, using the chat. I'll try to monitor that and uh, answer them on the fly. If you have some bigger ones, uh, please keep them uh, till the end. Uh, I hope we'll, be, we'll have some time to answer them uh, or at least a few of them. Okay, uh, do you have any questions right now? If yes, just write them on the chat. Can't see anything, so let me go to the, uh, to the actual coding. Uh, this will be more or less live coding experience, so, uh, Let's start. First thing uh, that is kind of obvious, okay. Uh, 
before that, okay, uh, recording, yeah, we'll have the recording uh, on our consumption YouTube. Uh, note, doesn't really matter. Both uh, versions 16 and 18 are okay. I know that Rhino also worked with uh, version 14, so this should be fine. Any new uh, one is uh, should be okay. Okay, uh, first thing, uh, we need to start Rhino application, to, to create our initial Rhino application. You can do it uh, by running uh, Rhino init function, or if you use RStudio, you can simply create a new project. And if you have Rhino already installed in your system, you will see something like that. Uh, I will, for this uh, workshop, I'll use uh, Visual Studio Code, but let me first create a, an application. So, uh, as the input for Rhino init, you just need to uh, give your application name or the your project name. So this is uh, extremely simple. So let's let's call it our med medicine. Okay, and something's happened. So we will have our profile, we'll have some packages here. Uh, as you can see, uh, Rhino forces you to use rnv. We'll have some structure created. So uh, let's quit. Let's go here and let's start coding. Yes, I trust myself. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, is this size of the uh, screen okay? Or you, do you want me to enlarge it? Maybe I'll do it anyway. Okay, what we have here? We have app.r, which is an entry point to our application. Uh, and this is something that uh, will run your application. Uh, if you are in our studio, you will see a button to run a Shiny application. Our studio perfectly recognizes that as a Shiny app. Uh, if you want to do this, uh, okay, I need to make it slightly smaller. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Okay, no, it does not work. Sorry. Okay, we can go with, uh, with a different mode. If you want to run your application, You can just run shiny, run up. And what you see is an initial shiny application. Uh, so what happens here? Rhino starts the application based on the main file. This is the, the initial module that you get uh, when you start a new Rhino project. And this is uh, something you should be familiar with, the server part and the UI part. Uh, what is different comparing to the, to the regular Shiny? You already have it wrapped in modules. Second thing different is this part. Uh, in Rhino, instead of calling, uh, of uh, using library, we uh, we use box. What's the difference? This uh, this thing will load shiny, but will load only those functions from shiny, 
so bootstrap page, module server, NS. And this is local. So those functions will be available only in this script. Uh, if you uh, know Python, this is this should be uh, kind of familiar to you because uh, Box is based on the idea that the, the, the import idea that is known in, in Python. Uh, we'll get back to it uh, in a second. Uh, what else we can see here? There is uh, our env it's here. So you already here, you can see the, the full library of your project. And you have our env log, so you know everything uh, about all the packages that are here. Uh, you get some configuration files. You get some initial structure of your application. A uh, few directories, uh, we'll get to it in a second. Uh, some initial JS file, some initial CSS file. Uh, you get a configuration for your uh, CI. This will uh, come in a minute. OK, so uh, the, the initial application is pretty simple. Just hello. So uh, let's start with having something. Uh, let's add a table. And to do that, we need, uh, uh, we need a table. We need a content of the table. And we will need to put it inside the application. So first, let's create a function that will produce a table. Uh, I will choose the logic directory because it's a place where uh, you should put your application logic, which is not reactive. Uh, let me call it just table. Uh, by the way, uh, this uh, separation between logic and view, which I will use in a second, is uh, just a suggestion. So if you want to use some different names or a different setup, feel free to do that. Uh, all right, so now I need to write kind of a function to, that will produce a table. So I will call it again, table. It should take something. And do something with, with this data set. Uh, so now we need a library that will produce a table. There are multiple solutions here in Shiny, DT, our handsome table, so on, so on. I will choose React table. But First, I need to install it. And this is the first uh, place where Rhino uses a well-known tool, which is Arendt, but adds a small twist to that. So first, let me install table. It should be pretty far because it's cached. And now what I should do is probably do the snapshot so to record the rack table in uh, in my dependencies file in my R log uh, RN block file. But the general way RN uh, works is that it scans your whole project setup project uh, directory for all library calls, uh, double columns, things like that. Here in Rhino, uh, we slightly change this solution. There is a file, call, a file called dependencies, which is the only file that will be checked for library calls. So if I, for example, I'm testing various uh, libraries for a table, like DT, Table, or hands on table and so on. 
and finally, I, I came up with the idea that, OK, the React table is the best one, and I will choose that. I will not end up with, the, with a mess in my iron block with, in my environment, because only things that are here will be stored in, uh, in iron block. Uh, no, the pro re repository is still empty. Uh, it will. I will push uh, things uh, as I'm showing you uh, the, the application. So the, for now, it, it is empty. Uh, it will be populated in a minute. So okay, you see, it found that work table is used and it stored it in. in my iron block. OK, uh, we've got this. So now we need to let this script know that we are using, we are going to use rack table. So as I already told you, we are not going to use library, but we are going to use box. And this construction will tell R that, OK, we are using this package, and we are importing this particular function into this uh, uh, here. OK, there is one thing missing, which is export. You probably know this uh, keyword from uh, package for, from developing packages. Uh, this is exactly the same. And now, the if I will try to use that file, uh, R will know that okay, table is a function that should be available. So in fact, you can think about this very very small script as a very very small package. I can have. Uh, additional functions here and this will be hidden only table will be available if you will try to, to to use that later if i if the product is getting bigger maybe this will be a part of a package and uh, okay I, I can see a question about the description file uh, yeah, the pro we try to use the description file. This is still in progress. The problem is that rnf, if it, uh, it if it finds a description file, it will store the libraries not here, but in a general uh, location. So this can cause some problems uh, uh, later with the because the, the, the library is not fully uh, stick to the project. OK, uh, the triangle, this is just the, uh, the native pipe from, from the uh, new R. VS code is just. Uh, because I am using uh, Fira code font, so this is uh, automatically get that will uh, be shown here. And if you, for example, use uh, things like that, it will also be be modified. Okay. Uh, benefits to use uh, VS over R Studio. Just a matter of uh, what you like. I like uh, VS Code more. It's uh, better to to use it if you work with different languages. And uh, extensions are super cool. Okay, let's let's go back to the uh, to creating a table. Uh, we have a table. We need something to put inside. So 
let me create another file. And I'll just use uh, a data set that is available in Rhino. Which is called Rhinos, and will uh, inside there will be uh, there is a bunch of uh, facts about Rhino servers. So uh, here is an exception. Regarding the box, normally I should use here dollar sign. This is a, a an alternative to this structure. Instead of having something like that, I can have something like that. Now I'm importing whole uh, package. It's not available, uh, or the functions are not available directly, but they are. Uh, accessible by using something like that, the dollar sign. If I want to uh, have everything uh, in in this script, I can do something like that. I this is not a good practice. The you you lose all those all the benefits uh, all those benefits that 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 are given you by using box. Uh, but yeah, you can do that. Uh, okay, so here this is a, an exception because for data sets the dollar sign doesn't work. And the last part, I need to use all of this in in the in my application. So let me quickly. show you how this can be, uh, how to approach that. Because now we have two scripts, table and data, and we want to create a new view with that table. So uh, Rhino takes everything, including the main part, and wraps it into shiny modules. So this is one leg of the, uh, of the encapsulation. Uh, the other leg is box. I will tell you a little bit more in a second. Uh, first, let's let's make this uh, work. So, yeah, we need uh, to simply render those uh, those things, and we need to be able to use those two scripts that we just made. Okay, uh, box can not only use uh, be, be used to call libraries. It is also going to be uh, it's also uh, used to load your scripts. Instead of uh, doing source something, you can do something like that. This points box to app logic table. Which is the file we just created, and you and it understands now that the table will be a function from that script. So why you you should do this instead of uh, having a global source? As you can see, I here use table, 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 table. Uh, this is a over-engineered uh, example because this is uh, just a very, very quick workshop. Uh, so uh, this is this may not make uh, too much sense here in a such small application, but if you have a very, very large application uh, with uh, I don't know, 20, 30 files, you can imagine that uh, there can be a mess. You go to a file and you will have uh, you will get some things like like that, and you will start thinking, okay, 
So I have a function fetch data. So where does it come from? And here's the answer. It's pretty clear immediately after you, you enter such a file that, okay, I'm using here those two scripts, data and table from logic, those are functions, and I need shiny and directable libraries. So later, if you get to the application in six months or any new developer gets here, uh, they will immediately know what's going on. And you avoid uh, various conflicts regarding the, the naming. OK, so this is a more or less full module of uh, that can be um, used in our application. Finally, we need to add it somewhere, add it to, the, to our main uh, part. So uh, first, of course, we need to load it. And again, this is the table. And but because this is the path, you already know that this is a different table that we uh, we have used in a minute in in a, a second ago. Uh, okay, we don't need this initial part. Uh, what we need is. Uh, we need to call the module that we just created. And that's it. We don't need those things. Let's check if of course not. Okay, so we missed something. We missed reactive. And it happens here. So here, the data is fetched inside reactive. This is something that will be useful in a second. OK, now. Okay, uh, I see a few questions here. Uh, how to create a view table are uh, just create a file and this uh, I will post this in a second. This will this will be just a regular Rhino module. If you have uh, if you are using R Studio, uh, there is also an add-in for that. So. Uh, Best thing would be to wait a second. Uh... And let me give me a second. I will just uh, quickly push everything to the repo. Okay, so. Sorry, I accidentally sent this to, to just one person. Okay, once again, this is a link to the repo. You should be able to see the code there. Okay, uh, let's get back uh, here. Uh, the application does not look very well. The, the table is uh, kind of, uh, uh, makes uh, not a lot of sense. So let's upgrade it. Instead of having just a plain rectangle, table, uh, let's add some uh, some data manipulation. 
I will simply use uh, deployer and tidier to do that. And what I'll do is I'll make columns for each rhino species. If you didn't notice, this is a table with a population of various species of rhinos by years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a column for each species and arrange it by year. Uh, what I miss is, of course, installation of packages. Uh, I need to save them in my RN block file, so I need to add them to the dependencies. The snapshot, so it's all start. Okay, it looks a little bit better. So we have column for years, and for each species of rhino, we have population. Uh, of course, this is uh, we have some blank spaces, but that's okay. Uh, okay, we have a table. Maybe let's add a chart. So again, uh, same as previously, let's create a file for that, for the uh, logic regarding the chart. Again, this is an overhead. So normally I wouldn't create a, a logic for a chart that can be uh, created in a single file. This is just for the sake of the uh, of the workshop. So again, I will use uh, eCharts for R. And I will need the plier. I will quickly copy a prepared function. So what we uh, want to do, we want to have a data, probably the same uh, data set as we uh, used uh, in a second ago. We want to group it by species. We want to have a chart by year. We, have a, we want to have a chart where the line uh, will be uh, marking the population of species. And x-axis should be here. And we can add tooltip just to make it better. Uh, OK, so we already have a logic for the chart. Not much logic, but a logic. We need a, a view for that. Again, this is uh, much overhead, but this is just for the sake of the of the workshop. And we will need some functions from each other's from R. And of course, we'll need to import the logic that we just created. So, Like that. Uh, okay, let's let's use that. Let's create a create a module with uh, the DIY part with uh, which will have this output and of course a renderer for the uh, for the chart. So, okay, we have data. Data will be the same as in the table. So uh, if you go here, this is a pretty simple function that 
just loads a dataset from a package. But we can easily image that, uh, have an image that this can be a call to the database, that can, this can be very expensive, uh, this can take time. So there is no point in, uh, there is no point in doing this twice. Let's simply pass the object here. And if we want to do that here, we probably also want to do the same here. And this, this will be just a, a part of our main function that will, or main module that will fetch the data and pass it to the table. We also need to remember that reactive is now here in this file, not imported. And what we need to do is we need to import here the chart. Uh, one thing that is cool in box is that you can have a trailing comma. So later, if you uh, push this to the Git repository and some, someone will add something here, only this line will be uh, modified. So this, this makes things much more uh, clear. OK. Let's call the UI. Let's do the same with uh, this part. Sorry. And what's missing is the package. Uh, one more thing is the dependencies. and the snapshot. Okay, and of course there is a problem with the main file. And there's still a problem because I did a typo. Okay. No. What happened now? Okay. Mm. First, we I missed the export here, but it was working previously because uh, if there are no exports, box assumes that everything is exported, but the missing part is here. We, because we started fetching data here, we need to, uh, logic, sorry. We need probably something like that. Okay, we've got everything. We've got a chart, we've got a table. Okay, so this works. We have two components. Uh, we have a over-engineered structure for such a small applications, but it, uh, in, a, in a larger scale, it will give you some, uh, give you a lot of benefits. So uh, again, for a small application, this may be an overkill to use uh, those things. For a larger, it st immediately starts to make sense to 
uh, to keep it like that. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me quickly push everything to the repo so you should you can have uh, access to that. Okay, so what can we do next? Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, there is a comma here. This should be a year, so this comma makes no sense. And uh, this is because this is an integer, so it adds automatically adds something like that. Let's get rid of it. And uh, I will show you how Rhino can interact with JavaScript code. So, if you go to the chart in logic, uh, here you can add uh, something called formatter. And this will take all values and somehow format it. And uh, this needs to be a JavaScript code. Uh, to, so I will simply use HTML widgets JS to convert uh, a string to a JS code. And normally I would just write something here. Uh, very, very short snippet of JavaScript code to remove this uh, this comma from the chart. But it's a great opportunity to show you how uh, JS uh, works in Rhino. So here, there is an initial file that uh, should contain your JavaScript code. Uh, there is a whole directory for that. Let's use it. And let's make it uh, cool. So, uh, so let's use some some features from newer JavaScript. Sorry. Okay. So we need to take value and. We need to make it a string. If it's a string, then uh, each from from for R shouldn't uh, convert. You shouldn't add the, the, this this uh, comma there. So there are multiple ways to do that. Let's use string interpo interpolation. Mm, again, overkill here, but why not? Okay, so we we have this function. Uh, what's next? Normally in Shiny, you would add a tag script to your to the head of your application to load the script, and this would be accessible. Uh, Rhino kind of does it for you, but with again with a twist. Uh, because the, the the things that are here are not going to be directly uh, put in the application. The location of all files that will be accessible uh, from the browser of your in your application will be uh, here in static. For now, there is only the the icon, uh, but there is a very very easy thing that you can do. And this is the first place where you need node. Uh, so what I have to do is I need to build a bundled JS file from what I just wrote. Uh, to do that, I need one more thing. I need to export that function. Uh, so 
similar to, to what is uh, done now in, in R files. In JS code, in Rhino, you need to export things that you want to be to, to access uh, from, from outside of, of the script. So if without this export, I wouldn't be able to access this format here function. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build JS. Uh, Rhino will install uh, node. So this is a play, node module. So this is a moment where you uh, need that. If not, if you don't have a node in your machine, then you need to uh, you need to do the this the old way just by uh, adding scripts to your uh, head. Uh, what is this uh, symbol? This this is the arrow, equal mark, and and again this is just a the way that that VS Code uh, formats it. And what just happened? Rhino created a new file in static.js with a JS code that is uh, It's minified that is in a single line that is uh, simplified that uh, in again this is an overhead because this is just a very very small function but in a large code base this is a common practice and this is uh, something natural for uh, people in JS world not so natural in R but Rhino tries to 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 bring all those best practices here. So this will be faster. This will allow all the browsers to use this uh, JS code, things like that. It's uh, under the hood, there is uh, Webpack, there is Babel. You can uh, learn more about it in Rhino documentation and in, in there are links to, to those tools. But let's check if, uh, if this actually works. And of course not. Okay. And it does not work because I I created this function, but I didn't use it actually in the chart. Sorry about that. So here I need to use this format here to, to give the, the, the information that Hey, use this function to, to format those values. But uh, this is uh, another difference between regular Shiny and Rhino. Now everything that is exported can be found under app. So if I do something like that, I hope that this will work. Okay, finally, as you I hope can see that there is no comma here. Uh, Okay, uh, one more thing regarding uh, JS code. This is not very cool because we have, uh, this is, those are three lines. I used arrow function, which should be uh, probably written slightly different. And uh, regarding the style guidelines for, for JS. So, uh, what Rhino can do for you, Rhino can uh, check if your code looks okay. And it does not. We have a missing semicolon, we have uh, too much things inside our function. Uh, probably it's, it works as you saw, but Let's make it better. And uh, I don't need to do it by hand. Uh, Lint.js has a nice argument fix. And you can see it looks much better. It's just a one-liner 
looks nice. Uh, okay, so that is regarding JavaScript. Uh, if you want, again, there is documentation for that in Rhino. Uh, we are working on that constantly. So hopefully there will be more in the future. There are also some discussions uh, on the GitHub page of Rhino. So please check that. And uh, yeah, let me quickly add this to the repo so you can access it. Okay, it's there. Okay, what's next? Uh, the application still is not looking the best. So we should probably add some styling here. And uh, to do that, I will quickly uh, add a few things in the main. So what I want to do is I want to have uh, somehow those uh, this chart and the uh, and table uh, inlined and maybe add some border or something like that. Uh, first, let's add some helper functions. Uh, as you can see, you can add them in the main. Uh, normally, for such components. I would probably create another directory called components or UI components. Uh, but for the simplicity, let's uh, add it here. I have added div, so it will ask for that later. So let's let's give a box the div that it wants. And let's wrap those things in the in those functions. Mm. Okay, so this is now in the grid. Let's add uh, add it to cart. And as you can see, the only thing that will now happen is we'll get those classes in those divs, so we can style them. Uh, I can do one more thing. I can add title to the page. Okay, let's go. Okay, you've got the title. Uh, if you check those elements somewhere, okay, here you have class uh, card and the, here you have class grid. So we can do styling on, on those elements. Uh, and obviously I have some CSS prepared. And for the CSS code or the styles, we have another directory called styles. And uh, this is another tool that is used by Rhino and is incorporated into, into the code. Uh, it's SAS. It's a modern uh, language that uses uh, a little bit uh, enhanced uh, syntax to, to, to produce a regular CSS. So here you can see one of uh, things that are available, which is mixing. So I can create something like that. This will give me a shadow. And later I can include this, uh, co this code in the uh, specification for the card class. Later, I could have another uh, class like box, and I would also be able to include the same the same thing here. So there's no need to to write uh, why it's the same. There are very multiple various uh, things you can use. There is nesting. There is uh, there are functions. So. Uh, this is uh, really cool. Uh, if you want, please check the documentation of SAS. And uh, 
this is something, maybe I will remove that, that this thing. This is something that is uh, not a valid CSS right now because uh, the regular CSS does not know what is mixing, what is include. And uh, again, same as JS, this is just a file that is somewhere here and application is not going to see that. And similar to the um, to what happened a few minutes ago, we need to build a proper CSS from this. As it was done with JavaScript, this can be done also with, with the uh, SAS code. And here is a place where you can either use Node or um, our package. I encourage you to use Node. If you were able to do things with uh, JavaScript, you should be able to do things with, uh, with SAS. So if uh, you don't have uh, Node on your machine, you can go to Rhino YAML. Uh, and uh, change this uh, SAS configuration to R. And this will this will allow you to use the R package, but the problem with R package is that it depends on library that is deprecated. So it will not give you the newest uh, features that uh, SAS is uh, bringing to you, like uh, you will probably need to still use import to import other files, while now it is uh, encouraged to use uh, a keyword use. There are some things that are changing and you will be uh, stuck with, with the old uh, version. Uh, okay, a uh, question about this. Okay, uh, this is just a extension to Visual Studio Code. This is one of the uh, reasons I, I like this code. I can manually pick up a correct color. And uh, how I created a CSS file so quickly. So the CSS as CSS file was here, it was empty. And I had these styles prepared. So to, to quickly guide you what's going to happen. Let's, uh, there is no margin around here looks pretty odd. So let's add a margin to the whole application. Let's uh, use a grid display to inline those two parts. And uh, let's add a shadow and, and some padding to, the, to each part so it will look uh, better. Uh, okay, this is uh, regarding the shadow. This is just a snippet for to do that. So yeah, I to be honest, I copy pasted it. So this is not something uh, that I know by heart. Uh, it's just a matter of how wide should be the box around the. Uh, around the, the object. Okay, a uh, question about this one. No, uh, this uh, can have only a single value. So if you can use node, please uh, leave it as it is. If you have to use our package, you can change it to R, uh, but there are no other options and you can have only one option. And uh, this controls what's going to happen here. And this is a similar function to what happened with the JS. So what is new right now is the this file. So you can recognize all those things that were there. And if you check the definition of card, it now has this box shadow. 
And again, same as with JS, this file is already uh, imported by Rhino. So there is no need to, to create a, a link to the style sheet in, in the head of your application. This is already done by, by Rhino and okay, simply works. So now you have a nice box and inline things. Okay, so uh, this is it. And uh, same as it was with the with uh, JS, you can also have a linter for SAS. And this is something that uh, requires notes. So if you are using our package for SAS, sorry, this is not going to happen, going to work. Uh, now it works fine, it looks okay. If I you know, miss a semicolon, it should be able to, to spot it, okay. And same as with JS, it will be able to automatically fix it. Okay, uh, let me add it to the repository. Okay, uh, I have a few more tools uh, to show in Rhino, so, uh, but this will require a little bit more interactivity inside applications. So I want to create another module um, that will be responsible for filtering uh, species. So now you have everything here. I want to add another card here that will allow you to select um, which species you want to have. So again, same as, uh, as before, let's add some logic to that. Uh, this is purely related to, to the data. So I will create a function to filter. It needs to be exported. And uh, let's just use the plier. And as previously, we of course need to need, we need to to have the plier imported here. Okay, so now this will work. This should simply filter uh, our data set with uh, what will be given in some kind of input. And uh, let's let's create a, another tab for that, another box or something. So again, uh, let's use a shiny module for that. Mm, we will need to use uh, this filtering function. So how we can uh, filter? We can have a checkbox for that. So let's import a checkbox. Let's create a checkbox.
Okay, we need one more thing. We need uh, options for for those uh, for this checkbox. So uh, we could pull it from the data set, uh, but again, for the simplicity, I will just create a simple vector. Uh, as you can see, there is no problem with exporting a vector from a box module. And I will simply use it to, to populate the, the checkbox input and uh, to and to use it uh, to, to start with all uh, selected uh, species. Okay, and uh, we have the UI. We need to something to happen in the in the server part. So for sure, the server will will need to get some data, and um, it should produce a, a filtered data set. So let's use our new function. And let's use the what is in the input. Okay, that should work. And uh, now we need to add it to to our main module. So we need uh, uh, we need these uh, filters to be imported. helpful here and obviously we need a server part okay mm. now uh, this we need to somehow assign the what is the outcome from this server it will be just as reactive into a variable and pass it to the uh, to, to table and the server so let me quickly do it okay so now what is going to happen is uh, we should be able to to see a checkbox input with filters, which will be passed to, and the, the, which will be uh, controlling the data set. And data set after filtering should be uh, pushed to table and the chart. Okay, so it almost worked. But we again miss the reactive part. Uh, here we have reactive filters, also not reactive. Okay, let's give it. Okay. I guess this is something with the. Uh, Okay, here because it's it's a reactive to do this. Okay, so we have a filtering and it should work. It works. And uh, 
Maybe we also need to uh, change a little bit this layout. So let's go to our styles and let's make the grid a uh, three column one. again need to build us there is a way to uh, not have to do it every time uh, build SAS has a argument watch if you run it with that it will be running constantly and each time you change your uh, CSS file it will rebuild it and and create a new one but I'm not, not going to do this uh, here and uh, same as with the previous features this only works with the node version and okay, this works. So this is not bad, it works. Maybe this could be uh, wider, but let's leave it as this. And uh, I will quickly add things to the repository so you can, uh, you can have it. Okay, so another uh, good practice in software development is to write tests, obviously. So uh, in R and Shiny, again, obviously you have a, a very good framework for testing, which is test that, a very nice package. So uh, Rhino is not reinventing the wheel, it just helps you with, uh, with writing your tests. So if you go to the root directory, you already have a test, tests directory and test that. There is a single file that tests uh, the, the main server. We already modified that, so let's get rid of it. And let's write a new test. Uh, seconds before we created a, a function for, for filtering. So let's create a file that will be responsible for testing that logic. It needs to be, it needs to start with test. And okay, what we need, we need to test that. So here, as you can see, I simply ported everything from, from test that. And uh, I wouldn't do that in, in the application, but in the unit tests and for the sake of the speed, I will, uh, I will leave that as it is. Let's import uh, our function. And one thing you uh, should notice here is that we are now in tests test that directory. But uh, we still start our path from the root. So uh, this is something that, again, Rhino gives you, and it is hidden here. So when you start your R process, it will, R profile is obviously red and it will set the box path, which is the route uh, where the box packet will look for modules to your working directory. That's why it's, you don't have to do weird things like that here. You can, it will understand when we're, uh, it understands uh, such things, but there's no need to do that. Okay, we have uh, not much time, so let me quickly copy the unit test. It's very simple. It just takes a mock data frame and checks if we filter by A 
it will produce the proper IDs. And uh, again, Rhino produces, a, has a wrapper for, for tests. And, okay, it just ran the test that we wrote and all are working. Uh, okay, but this is uh, pretty common. Uh, what is not so common is uh, the usage of end-to-end -end tests. So Rhino comes with a framework called Cypress, which is responsible for running a front-end test, which is responsible for testing the front-end of the application. So uh, let me quickly run the basic test. Okay, maybe I should run it. Uh, differently, so it will. What is what is it, what it is now uh, doing? It is running a headless browser with the application, and it checks if that worked. Okay, our application worked, and but to show you how does it uh, actually work, I will quickly copy paste an actual end-to-end -end test. Okay, what this is going to do, this is going to open the application and this is going to click all the checkbox, checkboxes. So uh, and it will expect some kind of message which is not there. And let me show what happened, but this time with the interactive mode, so you will see what is going on. Okay, so we have our test, our test file, which, has, which I just edited. And it has two tests. First, it checks if application starts and then it fails. That's okay. You see what happened if all the checkboxes are unchecked, there is a problem because there is no uh, data. So the chart uh, fails. And uh, you can go through the, uh, through the scenario of the script and check where, where uh, things happen. Uh, we don't have time to dig into that, uh, so uh, this is a powerful tool. It uh, is kind of competitive to what was recently shown uh, on Azure Studio Conf and or on Epsilon Shiny Conf, uh, and I mean uh, Shiny Test 2. It is kind of a different. It requires Node, it requires writing uh, tests in JavaScript. So this is a, a sample test. Mm. But on the other hand, it is better comparing to Shiny Test 2 because uh, it actually simulates the actions in the application. Shiny Test 2 uh, does things like uh, changing the value of the input. And here we have an actual click on the input, so the, an actual event. So uh, there are some differences. Probably right now in the future, we'll also incorporate Shiny Test 2. So uh, stay tuned. Okay. Uh, this is not going to... Uh, Okay, uh, is there a gallery of apps that use Rhino? Uh, not yet. Some of our recent uh, demos are using uh, Rhino. So in general, from uh, looking at last few months, uh, we in, in Epsilon, we started all uh, using Rhino. So. Uh, probably this will come uh, in the future. For now, there, unfortunately, there is not uh, no gallery. Uh, 
the UI of the application will be similar. There is no difference in what you get. There is difference in how you uh, how you write your application code. So uh, don't expect from such a gallery any uh, anything different that you can see in some top-notch uh, shiny applications over the world. The the key is what's going inside. Uh, Okay, we have only seven minutes, so maybe I will end right now. And I'll let you ask some questions. So, okay, from now you should be able to unmute yourself. So if you have any questions, uh, if something was unclear, please, uh, please ask. Now you can always write in the chat. Okay, if there are no questions, I can show you one more thing that is available in Rhino, which is logging. So if you go to the config file, which uh, again uses a, a config package from, from our studio, so uh, it utilizes uh, the things like uh, having different environments and like that, Check the, the documentation, it's really, really cool. Uh, it is populated with uh, two values, with uh, Rhino log level and Rhino log file. So if you go to, let, let's uh, use it here. We can start adding some messages, which are uh, kind of a better than, uh, than a simple print. Let me show you what's happening. Uh, in Rhino, you can import a um, log, which will include uh, seven standard levels of logs that can be produced by your application. And if I now go to the application, run the application and start filtering. You'll see that it informs you that, okay, there was filtering action, this timestamp and the level of the message is info. So it is a pretty standard in software engineering. Uh, the cool thing now is that you can change the level of uh, of uh, those filters, of those messages. So if I uh, I change uh, the value of the of the environmental variable, which is here, to something else. Like the warning. Uh, patient will no longer uh, produce those uh, things. So, if this is a production and, uh, application, you can have a very limited logs. But if something happens, you can uh, change the level of logging to to debug and have very very uh, large logs to to debug it very efficiently. So this is a small thing, but a really cool, a really standard thing in, in the applications world. So this is now incorporated into Rhino without any 
uh, any additional uh, configuration requirements and things like that. It just works. Uh, okay, uh, time is up. Time's up. Uh, I think we can finish. If there is anything uh, you want to ask, uh, we probably have still time for a small question. If not, uh, please, uh, you can reach me on LinkedIn or on Twitter, or uh, you can write to us to Epsilon um, by our website. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, watching. Uh, how easy it, it is to use Crosstalk with Rhino. Uh, it should work. Uh, in general, uh, the most of the uh, shiny packages in uh, simply work. There are some uh, problems uh, with uh, it can be some problems with, uh, with the, for example, the debugger in our studio because of the uh, how the box is loading things. But in general, uh, it should work. If it does not, uh, then uh, Rhino is pretty fresh. So uh, any feedback and uh, any comments will be appreciated. Uh, we will try to make it work if, it, if there are some problems. Okay, I uh, don't see any more questions. So, so again, thank you very much. Uh, it's just great pleasure to, to be here with you. I hope that you will give Rhino a chance. Thank you. <laughs>